We got a phone call here at my fire department that afternoon. Can you respond to Chris Field? We've got people that need to be rescued. We got flooding like we've never seen before. Sandy was a, a watershed event for more than a few people around here. But Sandy, for in my lifetime, that's the worst. I've been through five, six, seven hurricanes, and Sandy was the worst one that ever hit Chrisfield. This had been forecasted in 2005. Four maps were produced from category one to four. Category one took in the lower third of Somerset County. This was in 2005. I saw him laying on the table and said, are we doing anything about this? Oh, well, it'll never happen here. That was pretty much what I was told. Well, guess what? It did. I mean, it was disaster. We had three, 300 and some houses flooding in Chrisfield. It's the highest tide ever. The whole town's flooded, inundated. I was sitting in my house looking at it, it looked like it was in, I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. As far as I could see was water. Saturday before Sandy hit here, I was asked by a county official as a member of the Swift Water Rescue Team for the county, what do you need? I said, it's too late. We can't go to Walmart and get it. So we go with a John boat. That's all we had. I get there and I talk to the guy, the officer in charge, and he had a list, two pages long, of people that needed to be rescued. Houses sticking up out of the water. Couldn't even see a blade of grass anywhere. I mean, it flooded. Almost every every house in the lower end of town was flooded. Yeah. National Guard showed up with a five-ton truck. But we towed the John boat as far as we could tow it. We stopped and launched the boat. Back at the five-ton military vehicle, we towed it on down the road until we come to the first resident. We'd take the boat, go to the house, get them, bring them back to the five-ton. Until the five-ton got to where he said, I can't go any farther, it's too deep, my exhaust is in the water. So the five-ton became an island for a rescue. We'd go to the house and get them in the John boat two at a time and bring them back to the five ton. Well, he tries to turn around and get stuck. Mm -hmm. Run up on top of a fire hydrant. The water level was above the fire hydrants. No, I didn't leave my house. I was, they're going to have to have go away. I'll have to go away in it. They're going to. Have, I'll float off with it. I'm not leaving my house. <laughs> I built my house up. And so it, I didn't get water in my house. But it, it came up to the top step though. The houses, the ones that were my grandfather built and all his cousins, the island houses, those, if you go by and look at them today, they're, they're 10 blocks high. They, they built these around in the 1920s and 30s. They're islanders and they brought the island mentality and they built them up 10 blocks high over here. So they had a little cellar in the bottom. Practically, they, used, they kept their stuff in a cellar there, but practically they kept them real high and they, they would never flood. If it weren't for reinforcements of real swift water teams, really equipped swift water teams that were provided by FEMA, lives would have been lost. Since then, uh, through the Maryland Emergency Management Agency and state homeland defense funds, our county now has a fully equipped, fully trained team of 15 people, 15 swift water technicians who are ready, capable, and willing to respond to the next Sandy. And it's inevitable that it's gonna repeat itself. The sea level's rising here at a rate that it is nowhere else in the world, it seems. And the intensity of the storms will only get worse. But the biggest tragedy of all will be if we have failed to learn from it. 